Time for a chat. What do you say? Indeed. All right, we've got Dr. Mwokasina. He's the chairman of the Entomological Society of Kenya. I didn't know we had one. <laughs> oh, now you know, Jeff. Dr. Kasina, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, so this is, they're describing this as a once in seven decades thing? I mean, that's, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, we describe locusts as a occasional pest. That's what uh, the swarms come once in a while. But that while, we usually don't know. Yeah. yeah. And what's, what's brought this swarm this time? It's, um, usually when you have the swarm, implies that uh, there was favorable environment mm -hmm. for them oh. yes, so in this yes, case yes. it was the rains that brought there them. were rains uh, crops at, at least that enabled uh, them to have more than two generations so that they can increase speaking in the of which how fast do mm. they breed mm. uh, they, they can breed quite fast within uh, four months or so mm. they will be having another generation and continuously like this okay yes uh, quick question doctor H how dangerous are these swarms because obviously they're, they're literally sweeping through farmland yeah. and crops it's just like fire just like fire just like fire it's, it's they are really dangerous they can uh, completely decimate food pastures and all that so they are quite dangerous and the fear is yeah. uh if it does touch our bread basket for instance mm. yeah what happens next? Yeah, uh, the good thing is um, we are still yet towards uh, the long range. Therefore, there is time, and uh, the government is doing quite a lot to manage. I'm sorry, doing what? Tear gas? Uh, or? You, you know, we, we have seen sprays, pesticide sprays become uh, number one option, basically, when you have such a, a swarm. But then uh, you follow with other methods like use of biological control. That is sustainable. And, and some have been concerned about the impact of the spraying on the environment. Mm. Is there any adverse mm. impact? Uh, let's say maybe seven decades ago, the pesticides that were there, they were extremely so tosc toxic. But right now we have some molecules that are, they break faster. For example, you can spray and within two, three days you can eat. That they have already been broken. So I... I hope these are the pesticides that are being used. Yeah. Yeah, that have short in duration in the environment. Okay, in the meantime, yes. the locusts could be used as food. Very well. Huh? Yes, and they are very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are really proteinous. Yeah. But, but Dr. Casino, protein. you know, it sounds ideal, yeah. but most Kenyans would not see that as a choice no. food so how do you get them to go in that direction okay uh, one of my members of our society was telling us that uh, in our hard times their parents used to harvest these locusts mm -hmm. when they come in swamps and since the locusts have eaten the food then they will store them they will dry them and store them in the granary and there will be no food relief because they will eat this and, and, and you said there's lots of protein yes yeah. It's really proteinous, it's, and it has good minerals. You can get calcium, phosphorus, you know, unique elements that we need, okay. that we are lacking. Okay, doctor, let's, let's ask somebody who is an expert in locust eating, or at least has tried it on one, maybe more occasions. Victoria, <laughs> you have tried locusts. I have, yes. And? They're, they're pretty good. I wouldn't have it as an everyday meal, <laughs> right. but... They are tasty. Okay, describe it. Is it like a drumstick or a regular drumstick or is it like sh having a shrimp cocktail? I mean, uh, uh, hardly, hardly, hardly. I always say this. It tastes like a burnt fried egg. Oh, the outer layer? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I don't know, Dr. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they are if that's enough to appetize anyone. Also, they can be eaten fresh directly. Huh? I've seen even uh, some guys in uh, Northeastern just eating directly. You just munch them. You grab it? You grab it and swallow it. And it is really tasty. Yeah. But you don't also eat the ones that are being sprayed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because you yeah. eat pesticides. Mm -hmm. Let, let's go back to the spraying issue yeah. because um, how effective is it if they're moving from one county to another? Or is it that they're breeding much faster? Uh, if you look at the, the population that you have already placed here, yeah. Uh, usually when the uh, locusts, they have two forms. There is a form they stay alone, solitary, mm -hmm. and there is this one we are seeing. Mm -hmm. So in this form, 
uh, the young the young swarms they are pinkish mm -hmm. so okay. these are immatures okay. they are not ready to to mate to lay eggs and all that then they turn when they are mature after three weeks or so to yellowish mm -hmm. therefore at this time when they are being sprayed at least they are not laying eggs as they mature that that is the time now they started reproducing therefore at this moment uh, we are not really much worried when we see government is investing quite of uh, energies in controlling these immature stages yeah. okay. uh, so the question is dr Ari, mm. how concerned should we be because you know how long will it take for for these things to disappear if if, if at all okay one of the challenge is chasing them away yeah so every time they land at a certain area and people are chasing them away, they get to the hair and they move on. So the swarm continues. But uh, if we are not in disturbing them, then we give uh, opportunity to those who are spraying or reducing them to reduce them. One of the challenges would be uh, they can cause massive damage mm -hmm. to some of these families. They are possibly there could be a policy or government directive to support or to compensate those farms. So when you say the swarm continues, does it mean they'll go beyond the territory that they are in now yes. to even come towards Nairobi and other main cities in it, Kenya? Yes, particularly in dry areas, areas that are not really cold. So Kambani? Move. Yes, they will mm. move. They will move to Kambani towards yeah. coast. They, yeah. will, they can also move to, uh, towards Kanji and across to Tanzania. Where did they come from? Possibly uh, Somalia. Somalia, Somalia, Ethiopia, wow. because uh, Ethiopia there is yeah. good breeding ground yeah. for them. Okay. Okay. How worried should we be overall? There is no need to panic because at least we are managing, and uh, the government has uh, put in place a multi-institutional team. Our society is involved. Some of our members are already on ground. Uh, working with locals and yeah. the Ministry of Issues. Yeah. So I think uh, there is no need to panic. But people should be able to report immediately the site. Wherever they are, they cite them. So we need to manage them from proceeding ahead. But warnings were coming in as early as November, Dr. Yeah, I mean, what happened? Yeah, in, in November, they were not in Kenya. Oh. They, were, they weren't in Kenya. We knew they were in Ethiopia, they were in Somalia, they were in Yemen, uh, and they were coming. Yeah. But you also know the conditions that uh, you are, they are in, like, for example, in Somalia, where you can't manage their movement easily mm -hmm. compared with Kenya. Yeah. So it's possible to, to have quicker reactions in Kenya compared with Somalia. Yeah. Okay. So don't panic. Yeah. If you see locusts Please. in your backyard, Please. just, you know. Take some. Sample if you <laughs> dare. Yeah. <laughs> and if, uh, yeah. if the companies that make animal feeds yeah. can be able to harvest as many as possible, then they can reduce the cost of animal feeds because this is cheap uh, yeah. protein. Yeah. So what's the difference between yeah. a locust and grasshopper beyond mm -hmm. the fact that the sizes are different? Okay, they belong to the same uh, grouping of yeah. insects. Yeah. But again, uh, locusts uh, are shorter, you know, they, they antennae, are some uh -huh. yeah, antennae, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, most, uh, most of the time they behave the same way. Okay. But uh, grasshoppers don't form swarms. Oh. Ah, we see. They okay. can increase in the population. Right. You can see many, but they will not swarm. Okay, mm. interesting. Like mm. shrimp and lobster. Mm. Mm. Uh, hardly. Uh, let's take a look at some feedback. Shall we do that? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Fred saying, yeah. actually, locusts used to invade lower land in parts of Western Kenya, where I come from. Many years ago, they had seasons. And they would capture them, boil and store them for food in Luo. They are called bonyo. Bonyo, just like what Dr. Kasina just said, yeah. right? Yeah. They would store yeah. them in grain yeah. Yeah. granaries. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, more yeah. feedback, Dr. Ari. Listen mm. to this. Uh, Eli Khumundu says, Mboga Tamusana. Iyoku, <laughs> Ellie, Interesting I did not say that. Yes. Still on Twitter, yeah. Nyagero saying yeah. some locusts are edible. In fact, they're higher in protein than meat. Dr. Tarin, can you confirm that? 
Well, not really, but they are comparable. Is that right? They are comparable, mm, yes. Okay. They are comparable. They are better than uh, legumes, pulses. What? Yes. In terms of protein quantity? The protein content is quite high, over 60%. Okay. So how did you feel when you ate your locusts? I didn't feel any different. Okay. <laughs> Santos Jr. 254 says, locusts are food. People should not complain, but should eat and eat what they do. What they, what more they do they expect? That's manna from heaven. Huh. Okay. Interesting observation Indeed. there. Okay. Manna from heaven. Uh, and we have Bravin Yuri saying locusts can earn Kenya a huge foreign exchange <laughs> if they can be trapped and harvested. <laughs> Ugandans eat them, so does the Middle East. This is money we are playing with, yet people in Turkana are dying Hungry. It's even more funny that we are now using 254 million shillings on this. Yeah, interesting, huh? Yeah. But you have Ugandan friends who tell you they really cook them with all kinds of... Um, oh, it's a whole yeah. process. And even for Ugandans who are in the diaspora, mm. they ask for them to be transported to wherever they are in is the world. That, is that right? Yeah. Doctor, uh, uh, CS for Agriculture, Mwangi Kyunjuri said, mm. if you see locusts, take pictures and post Yes, I think that is an uh, excellent uh, advice because once you get pictures, you can uh, guide Kenyans whether it is locust, whether it is grasshopper, <laughs> or even some pictures you can, uh, some Kenyans will tell you these are taken from another place. Mm. Or some years ago. So beyond advising them, what are they to do? So you right. have a picture yes. of a uh, locust, locust on your phone, yeah. what yes. do you do next? Then we go back to them. I, I expect that uh, once they get this picture, they decide what is it, they will have feedback. Yeah. Yeah, and they will, if it is really a swarm, they will advise the ground team to move. Okay. Doctor, yeah. is it true they've reached Meru County? Yeah, I have information from uh, the chief officer there. The, they've reached Meru County? Yeah, they, they say they, they have And they are feeding on the Vey Vey? And they look like they are feeding everything. On the Mira? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. No, that is that's that's definitely tough. a story to watch in the next few no days doubt. and weeks. Dr. Muwakasina, Chairman, Entomological Society of Kenya. Thank yes. you so much Thank for you. your passing by. Welcome. Appreciate, Appreciate that. It.